Hey everybody, this is graphic designer Roberto Blake. In today's video, I'm actually going to talk about how you design your PDF portfolio. If you're just tuning in for the first time, I usually do graphic design videos on Mondays and Photoshop CC tutorial videos on Thursdays, so definitely subscribe to get all those. So, when I talk about your PDF portfolio, I'm not necessarily talking about the print portfolio that you take with you to interviews or when you're meeting clients for the first time. I'm talking about a digital PDF portfolio that you should make available to download from your website and that you should have a smaller version that is good to email or link to to send off to your clients or that you can uh, upload to sites like SlideShare and share with people so they can discover your work. So with that in mind, the PDF portfolio is going to be very different than the print file that may be that same PDF that you're using when you go ahead and do your print portfolio for clients. And the reason is this, one, file size. So if you're emailing something, you definitely want it to be as small and light as possible. So that means that it's not going to be 300 DPI. I would still say that there's a chance that they might print it out. So maybe you make it 120 DPI so that's still smaller than your print file, but it's something that if they want to, they can print it out. Also, you may choose to not have them print it out at all. You may really want to keep it just to being for screen and give an option for a print version that they can download. And if that's the case, maybe it's not going to be an eight and a half by 11 uh, document, maybe you're going to actually want this PDF that's going to be emailed to be sized to be more of a screen resolution. So there is that possibility as well, and you may want to consider doing that. You may also decide to include less overall pieces in the PDF portfolio since they're going to be viewing it online, and they may not want to spend a bunch of time in front of the screen the same way they would if they were with you in person. So maybe you limit that specifically to 10 or 12 pieces instead of anywhere from uh, 12 to 18 pieces. Uh, again, you just have to decide how much work you want to show off. And remember, since it is online, you can put a link in the portfolio as a PDF or even use interactive elements to link them to the rest of the information that they would want to see, like other stuff in your portfolio or in your gallery or what have you. Um, so definitely do that. Link them to your website. Just you know, go ahead and put that capability for them. Just click and push the button and go to that online since it is an online document since it's not the print file. So again, this is something that you might need to change from that original print file and make a separate file for. If your PDF that you printed is actually in a uh, vertical format, consider the digital version being horizontal and wide because it's gonna be viewed on a wide screen. So while you might have them flip through a traditional book style vert uh, if you were in person, their experience when they're at their computer alone is gonna be very different and it might be hard to see the whole design or appreciate it if it's in that vertical format and they have to do a bunch of scrolling. So go ahead and try and make it a horizontal wide format if they're gonna be viewing it on their computer, even if it means making a completely separate document than the one that you made for print. This means that you're paying attention to the user experience behind the design, and that could actually be very important and tell someone a lot about you who's reviewing your portfolio. You should consider keeping a copy of your PDF portfolio on your smartphone, that way you can um, send it to someone as an attachment, either directly through messaging on the phone or through email on the phone right then and there. If you happen to encounter them live and in person somewhere in the middle of the street at a restaurant or at a networking event, or literally in an elevator, you can do an elevator pitch and send them your portfolio right then and there. That is definitely something convenient that you can do. So I recommend having a copy of this PDF portfolio right there on your smartphone. In general, you should also have the uh, pages from your PDF portfolio as a JPEG stored in your email, stored in your phone and in the cloud so that you can do the same thing and send select pieces if you want to or send the entire thing. Just always keep your options open and that's one of the great things about having multiple portfolios. Because you're not having this printed, there isn't any real expense against it. So feel free to have multiple versions of your PDF portfolio. If you do a lot of different types of work, go ahead and do that. I have a portfolio that's just for my logo design work and just for my photography, for example, as far as a PDF that I can just send right off to people and give them enough of a sampling really quickly in like a few pages, maybe 10 to 12, of what I have to offer and a little bit of background on me and links to uh, my site. So definitely make sure that you're doing that so that you give yourself every opportunity to get new business, new clients, or attract new people to you or to land that job. Anyway, that's my advice on PDF portfolios. If you would like me to take a look at yours, definitely let me know. Um, message me with a link to it, and I'll definitely check it out as soon as I can and get back to you. If you think I missed anything or you have any questions, definitely leave that in the comment section below. Like this video if you liked it. Don't forget to subscribe. Check out the other graphic design videos that I do on this YouTube channel. And as always, thanks for watching.